Hey guys, what's going on? Tubo Cruz here, and in today's video, I'm going to be talking about some of the most important accessories and things that you should bring while commuting by bike. So I've been a daily bike commuter here in Japan for over a year, and over the last year I had a long distance commute. I was commuting 40 kilometers or 26 miles every single day, and now I've got a little bit of a shorter commute. And whether you're a serious bike commuter and riding to work every day by bike, or if you just commute by bike once a week or so, I think we've got some valuable information in this video, so you're going to want to stay tuned to the end. And before we begin, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button down below, and let's go ahead and get started. So this is my commuter bike you can see right behind me. Fans of the channel know that this is Nanachan, my trusty steed, my single speed Schwinn Madison. I've had this bike ever since I moved here to Japan over five years ago, and I've barely had to do any maintenance on this bike. So I think the first critical thing when you're starting out bike commuting is you need to make sure you have a reliable bike and something that's not gonna break, something with reliable parts. So I've made a whole video discussing the different types of commuter bikes, what type is best. You can go check that out if you're interested in seeing that. But basically, I use a single speed as my main commuter. There's not many parts on it that are gonna break and I've got hard case tires on here. So that's my setup, it's really simple. But today's video, I wanna talk specifically about what should we bring? So this includes what should we bring on our bike as well as what should we bring on ourselves? So the first important question you got to ask yourself is how much stuff do you need to bring to work every day? Do you have a locker at work that you can store all your stuff or do you need to bring a decent amount of stuff with you every day? And for me personally, when I'm commuting, I like to keep as much stuff off my bike as possible because when I arrive to my workplace, I just want to grab my bag and go. I don't want to spend time detaching all these different things from my bike that I'm worried about getting stolen. So I don't like using saddlebags. I don't like leaving things that are valuable on my bike. I want to just be able to arrive to work and head straight into the office. So that's why for me, my number one way for carrying my equipment is with a backpack. This is the one that I use. This is by a company called Craft Cadence and it is an awesome bag. It's fully waterproof. It's huge. I can fit my computer in here. I can fit a spare change of clothes, some extra shoes, my lunchbox, everything in here. And it's a really great bag. So as long as your commute isn't too long and you don't have too much heavy baggage, I think the backpack is fine, even on the longer commutes. And like I mentioned before, that way you can grab all your stuff and just go. And inside my bag, this is where I store all of my must bring cycling tools, just in case something happens on the road. I wanna be ready to deal with it. So I think these are some essential items that you'll wanna carry. This is just a simple little bag here. You don't need anything fancy. And let's take a look at what I got inside here. Of course, some of the main problems you'll experience in bike commuting is flat tires. So that's why it's always good to have some sort of patch kit. That way you can fix your tubes or you can bring some spare tubes as well. I like to always bring at least one spare tube as well as a couple different patch kits. And you also wanna bring some tire levers. It's a good idea to always have at least two tire levers. I like to bring three just in case one breaks. I have a habit of breaking tire levers, unfortunately. It's also a good idea to bring some kind of mini pump. There's a whole bunch of different types of mini pumps. This one's a little bit larger and it's got this hose that separates here, um, but it is a little bit bulkier. So if you're worried about size, you can go for a sleeker option like this. And this one's really nice and compact. You can see the tube just pulls out here and it pumps like this. This one's one of my favorite ones for when I'm not carrying a backpack because it just fits right in my back pocket and it's super lightweight, really easy to use. I think this one was made by Giant. I'll leave some links down below to all the different parts that I'm introducing in today's video so you can check them out if you're interested in getting one for yourself. Another good alternative if you don't like using those hand pumps, those can be horrible to work with when you're tired and on the road and you need something quick. I really recommend using some type of CO2 cartridge. And so with CO2, you're gonna need the CO2 cartridge itself in some sort of adapter like this. This was sent over to me by this company, Unique, which is based out of Taiwan. And they're a cycling parts manufacturer based in Taiwan. They're actually the sponsor for today's video and they built this CO2 cartridge adapter here. So you just bring that with you, you spin it on, push the button and you're ready to go. I'm not gonna push it right now because I don't wanna waste a CO2 cartridge. I'm gonna save this for when we need it. But yeah, thank you to Unique for sponsoring today's video. You can go check out their products. I'll link them down below. And another one of their products I wanted to introduce in today's video is this kind of multi-tool. This is called their stepless tool. And this is a really unique multi-tool. When I first saw it, I'm like, what is this? And it's built from aluminum, so when you feel it, it's a really solid build. And this is actually a racket tool. So all the parts are stored in the bottom. You just unscrew it like this, and you can see they've got a whole bunch of different types here. So we've got our different Allen keys, and the Allen keys go all the way up to a size eight, which is massive. 
And there's some other useful adapters on here as well. It's always good to have more tools than less when you're out on the road. You never know what's going to happen and you don't want to be missing the one part that you need. And the way this works, it's pretty nifty. They've got the, the main part of the ratchet in the center. You just push this on here, pick the piece that you want. And these pieces are all magnetized, so you just load it in and it's not going to fall or anything like that. And there we go, we got a racket tool ready to go. And the other really cool thing about this is this is actually a finger racket tool. So if you need to get into the bike in some little narrow part, you can get in like this and just twist your fingers. So overall, a really cool tool and everything is magnetized. So you can see it's not just going to fall off or anything and it just gets really compact. There we go, really interesting design. And if we're to compare this to a traditional kind of multi-tool, this is one of my older multi-tools. It's about the same size. It doesn't take up that much more space and you get a lot more different sizes and adapters that you can work with. These traditional multi-tools can be really good, but some of the main disadvantages is sometimes they don't have all the different adapters that you need. And sometimes it's difficult to get the right leverage with these tools. You can't really fit it in the right way just because the size is awkward. So that's why it's sometimes nice having the smaller different adaptable bits and the, the finger twister. I can see that being useful in some situations. And also if you're rocking a tubeless tire setup, it's a good idea to carry a puncture fix kit as well. So Unique also makes one of those. If you're interested in checking this out, I'll link it down below in the description. And I really like their anodized metal kind of design on all their products so far. It looks really cool. And unfortunately, I've never used a tubeless tire setup on my bike. And I know I've gotten countless comments on this channel from you guys telling me I should invest in a tubeless tire setup. But for me, I really enjoy the tube and tire setup, especially with these tires. These are the Schwalbe Marathon tires and I've never gotten a single flat on these tires. So if there's no problem and everything's working, I don't see a reason to really change my setup right now. But one day, I would like to try a tubeless setup and see what all the hype is about. And one of the last tools in my bag is a 15 millimeter wrench. So if you're a fixed gear rider, if you're a track rider, you know exactly why we need this. If something happens with my bike, if the chain tension is off, if my wheel isn't straight anymore for some reason, if you don't have one of these, you're out of luck. You're not gonna be able to fix this. So that's one of the downsides of riding a fixed gear bike is you do need to carry this extra tool that is pretty much useless for any other type of bike, but always make sure I have this with me. And so far I've mentioned all the different tools that I carry with me in my bag. One alternative for carrying some of the tools on your bike is this cool little bottle container here. So let's take a look at that. This is made by Zifal. I'm not sure the actual name of this. I think it's called the Z box or Z tube or something like that. I'll link it down below. This is really nifty because it's the same size as a water bottle, but basically you can fit different tools in here and there's two different containers. One is the main big container here and then the second one is this smaller container up here. So up in the top part, that's where I carry some random different parts. Uh, things that I don't know if I'll need, but maybe I'll need it one day. So, uh, For example, I've got some electric tape in here. Electric tape can solve a lot of different problems. I've got a whole bunch of different patches in case I get a flat. I've got different like rubber bands in case I need to tie something together. And this is the rubber from the patch kit. It's kind of getting stuck together, so I guess some rubber got out of there. But yeah, I just carry a couple different random things in here that might be useful one day. And then looking in the bottom part, which opens separately, we can see we've got this full size here. This is where I like to put the tube and some of the bigger parts. So for example, this is a road tube. It just fits right in there. And if I needed to fit the CO2 cartridge in there as well, that fits right in there. And I can fit the multi-tool, I can fit the tire levers. So everything just goes in there, nice and compact, easy to go. So that way, even when I arrive to work, I can just grab this bottle when I arrive at work, bring it with me. I don't have to worry about anyone stealing it. It's quick to grab, quick to go. So this is another useful tool if you don't want to carry everything on your back and you want to keep things lighter. The only problem is the storage space in this is limited. So things like the pump won't be able to fit in here, unfortunately. And while we're on the topic of on-bike accessories, some things I like to keep on the bike, for example, are the locks. So I just made a recent video on the channel talking about different types of bike locks. The ones that I use every day is this U-lock and this cable lock. So I keep the cable lock on the back of the bike and I keep the U-lock in the center of the frame. It's maybe overkill to have two locks, but again, I like to think it's better safe than sorry. So that's why I carry two locks with me. And another extremely, extremely, extremely important accessory, which I learned the hard way, is a fender. So I used to hate fenders. I used to think they looked lame. I never wanted a fender on my bike, but 
Commuting through the rainy season in Japan changed my mind on this, and now I love fenders. I can't even imagine bike commuting anymore without a fender on my bike. When you commute through rain, most of the junk and stuff that gets on you doesn't come from the rain above, it comes from down below, so everything getting sprayed back up. And if you don't want your cycling clothes, if you don't want your work clothes, if you don't want your stuff just getting absolutely ruined, I definitely recommend investing in some kind of fender. It doesn't need to be a crazy expensive fender. Anything will work. Anything that can stop all the junk up from the road getting up onto you, getting up onto your bike. I probably should invest in one in the front as well, but I'm halfway there. I've got one on the back at least for now. There are some mounts that you can use on your bike for putting the hand pump on there, but I don't like using these, again, because I don't like extra steps of things that I have to take off my bike when I go into work. I want to keep the process as simple as possible. The locks are okay because I need to lock up my bike anyway, but the more things I need to grab from my bike is more things that add to my routine every day, and I want to keep it as simple as possible. So that's why I don't put too much on my bike. The only other thing that I really put on my bike are bike lights like this. So I've got a whole bunch of different bike lights. I've got smaller ones. This is a 400 lumen from Cat Eye, and this is their Volt 1700 lumen version. So back when I was commuting on the river path, there were no lights. There was nothing there. It was super dark. So that's why I needed this more heavy duty light. But yeah, for city riding, the smaller one is fine. Just make sure you don't forget to charge your light because you could be in trouble when you try to go home one day and you realize you didn't charge your light. It's also a good idea to have some sort of rear light as well. This is a new one that I'm testing out right now and it's pretty cool because this one's motion sensitive. So for example, if I shake it like that, you see the light change. So it's kind of like an alert. If you need to stop suddenly, you hit some sort of bump. If you shake it up like that, you see it changes up and I'll be doing a full review on this later on the channel. So we'll check that out soon. I think that finishes up most of the main bicycle accessories and on-bike parts that I wanted to talk about. Before we finish the video, I also wanted to talk about some on-body stuff, as well as a few honorable mentions on some other things that might be useful to bring on your commute. And one of the most obvious things, of course, is going to be a helmet. It's always a good idea to wear a helmet while riding. No matter how short your ride is or wherever you may be riding, it's generally a good idea to wear a helmet, so safety first. I also like to cycle with different types of sunglasses. So if you're commuting when the sun is really strong, it's a good idea to have strong sunglasses. I like these types of sunglasses, which sort of change depending on the light. So you can use them when it's bright out or when it's dark out. But even when it's kind of dark out with these, it's still difficult to see sometimes. So I like investing in a clear pair of sunglasses. I guess, what are they called? Just regular glasses then? They don't need to be expensive. I got these cheap from a hardware store, I think about 10 bucks or so. so. They don't need to be anything expensive, but it's a good idea. It protects your eyes from the wind. It stops bugs from getting in there. There's a lot of bugs here in Japan. So a good pair of glasses, a good pair of sunglasses. And if you're commuting in regular clothes, and now we're in the winter commuting season, so this is my best friend. This is my pants tire. So I tie this up on the bottom of my pants, and that way it prevents my right leg from getting all greasy and stuff in the chain. So if you're commuting in regular work clothes, this is a must. When I used to do my longer commute, when I was commuting 40 kilometers every day, I was commuting in cycling clothes and changing once I got to work. But now my commute's a lot closer to home, so I don't have to go very far. It's not worth changing clothes just for that short of a commute. So I commute in my regular suit and tie right now, which is kind of funny to see. The only thing I change is my shoes. I keep my work shoes at work, and I, I ride to work in my suit pants, so I use this strap to keep my suit pants nice and clean. Also, it's a good idea to have some type of bell on your bike. Depending on the country that you're in, it may be a requirement by law to have a bell on your bike. And if you're in Japan, like me, it's actually illegal to use a bell to alert pedestrians to get out of the way. They can only be used in emergencies here, but generally they want you to have the bell on the bikes here, but you can't use them. It's weird, I know. If you're interested in seeing more information about Japanese cycling laws, you can check out my video, but always a good idea to have a bell on your bike. And the last thing I wanted to mention, and this is my honorable mention, is some type of video camera. So that way you can film your ride in case something happens. You never know what's going to happen out on the road. So just in case something does happen, it's a good idea to have some type of video filming while it's happening. So that way you have that proof uh, later on in the future in case you need it. So it's a good idea to have at least one in the front of your bike. But if you have the budget and you have the, um, the old cameras, this is my old GoPro 4. This is the camera I started this channel on. Um, about three or four years ago. 
So if you're a fan of Tool Cruise from three or four years ago, if you've been watching us all these years, let us know down below. I'd love to hear your comment. Uh, but yeah, this is the camera where this whole channel started. It's not good enough footage for me to release like 4K videos on this channel now, but it's good enough for like filming uh, some kind of accident footage or like dash cam kind of footage. So you can get these really cheap on eBay, on Amazon, these old used GoPros. It's a good idea to have this as some type of insurance when you're riding. Anyway, that's it for today's video. I know it's a huge subject and there's surely some things that I missed. So if I forgot something, please let me know down below in the comments and let me know what you think is the most important tool or accessory for bike commuting. Thanks for watching guys and thank you to Unique for sponsoring today's video. Be sure to go check out some of their products listed down below and we'll see you next time here on Tool Cruise. Mm -hmm.